Okay, so this is a uh, Mega Squirt 2. I believe it's version 3. Yeah, version 3. And this is one that I put together, which uh, at some point I'll do a little talk through of my whole experience with this because I definitely learned some things that I wish it, I had known before. But what I'm doing here is I'm doing the uh, the mod for a PWM output. So I'm just following the instructions from the, uh, the assembly guide and the hardware manual. So you can see that one soldered really, really nice. And having a good soldering iron for this kind of stuff makes all the difference in the world. I mean, it's, if you're putting one of these together, just get a really good soldering iron because you'll just be thanking yourself the whole time. But yeah, so I just got that soldered on there, used all the proper uh, thermal compound, and I'm gonna put a little bit of heat shrink over the ends of it and just keep following the instructions. All right, there it is, all together. Got this little guy in, ran all the wires, removed the, uh, the parts that aren't needed for this PWM output. So now I get to go test it. All right, so this is gonna be how I think I'm gonna set up the PWM radiator fan for this thing and things relevant to the setup of this computer, which this computer is a Megascort 2 version 3. And the way I'm gonna be running it, or at least that I'm currently intending to run it, is I'm gonna be using a uh, coil negative tack input. So the computer is configured for coil negative tack input. And then I'm gonna be using the uh, the F idle pin on the Mega Squirt because it has the ability to have a PWM output for a idle valve. But instead of running an idle valve with it, I'm going to be running a radiator fan. So have a Volvo radiator fan up here, and uh, they came in more than Volvos. Like I have a real similar module here that came off of a Ford something or the other. But like those two wires will run to the fan motor and then you'll have the other two they go to constant power and constant ground because the relay i believe is built into this module and then this little green wire here which it's a different color on the volvo one this one came off of ford but that little wire is the signal wire that's going to hook up to the mega squirt and so that pwm basically what it is is instead of just supplying a constant 12 volts well, in this case, instead of supplying a constant ground, what the mega squirt is doing is it's breaking the ground. So the graph would just be, you know, a bunch of steps in it. And based on the frequency, you set the frequency of how often you want it to break the ground, which I'll show that in the settings. And it's the pulse width, because that's what PWM, pulse width mod uh, modulation. And you're changing, you know, how long, or I forget if it's, if it's how long it's connected or disconnected, but basically you're changing the width of those steps. And that signal again gets sent through this little wire to this module and this module transfers it uh, to a input that the electric motor can use. And that's how you get variable speed out of it. All right, so here's my very crude setup just for testing. So I have the, uh, the modification done per the uh, Mega Squirt manual for the PWM output. That's what those green, those three green wires, and that uh, I forget the name of that little guy in the end. Uh, but those parts I had to buy extra. Just got them off Amazon. It's just it's just this little component, the insulation under it, the mica insulation, and some thermal compound. And then I had to get a set of diodes, and uh, that might have been it. I think that was it, actually. And so as far as the fan, this is the fan that I have. So this came off of a, I believe it was a 2001 Volvo. And I mainly got it because the shroud is pretty much the exact size I need for the radiator I'm going to put in the Datsun. And again, it has this real similar little module. So these two wires get sent to the electric motor. These two wires is constant hot and constant ground. And then in this case, it's a purple wire. 
this purple wire gets sent to the mega squirt. And so one thing from the instructions though, as you see I have it disconnected from power right now, is it said to not keep this signal wire hooked up if this has power. So if I was gonna leave this positive wire hooked up to this module, I would have to disconnect this wire because it doesn't, uh, I think this wire is 12 volts and the Megasquirt doesn't want you back feeding voltage through that signal wire into the computer when the computer is off. So if the computer's on, it's fine, but if the computer's off, then you need to disconnect this signal wire or disconnect power from this. When I have it in the car, I have a relay that's gonna disconnect this wire. So I'll have constant power, constant ground, and then when the ignition is turned on, the relay is gonna connect these two wires together, and when it's off, it'll disconnect them. So that's how I'm gonna wire that up in the car. But now we'll get to the program side of it. Okay, so I'm here in Tuner Studio. Uh, there's the version up there. So the only settings I really remember having to mess with is it's all in the startup and idle section. So I'll just go through some of these and check for anything that could potentially be useful. So I think this is where the bulk of it was done. So in here, I had to select the PWM valve because I want the pulse width modulation, not just on off. I put it in open loop because open loop is the one that actually runs off of temperature, which we want in order to control the fan properly. Everything else, so normal, 0% is off. You can inverse this, uh, but in my case, it seems to work just fine having it as normal. Uh, this, I think, is it will run it before you start it. I don't think that would ever be necessary for a radiator fan. And so here at the pin, this is important, the F idle pin. So you need to set aside the F idle output for using the this PWM output to control the fan. I mean, I guess you could use one of these other ones, but I just went ahead and used F idle because it was the most convenient for me. And then the frequency. So I played around with this a little bit and I'm not sure exactly what frequency would be best, but 124 seems to be working just fine. Might do a little more playing around with it and see how that goes. Uh, there's also this screen, idle cranking. So this will, you could use this to determine the fan speed during cranking or with the key. I think you would even do it with the key off, but I'm or with the uh, motor off. I'm not entirely certain of that. In fact, scratch that. I'm pretty sure this won't do anything if the motor isn't running. This will only do it when it's cranking. So again, I can't imagine a scenario where you would want the radiator fan coming on while you're cranking. So left all of this as zero just to guarantee that the radiator fan doesn't try and pull amps while the starter is running. And then this is the bread and butter of this whole deal. So this is the graph that you're gonna set up in order to determine how your fan is gonna to respond to engine temperature. So you can see on the bottom here, we have coolant temp, degrees Fahrenheit. And then on the uh, Y axis, we have zero to 100 for the PWM output. If you click this little thing here, you can set your minimum and maximum uh, axis values. So I have mine drug way down here so that I can use uh, so that I can play around with it at ambient temp because before I was having to put a heat gun to the coolant temp sensor in order to get it to work and it's just a lot more convenient just playing with it down at, uh, at ambient temp. But yeah, so you can click it, drag it to wherever you want. So like for messing with this, I'll probably drag it up to here. So whenever everything comes on, it's going to start the fan at about 40%. And the limits of this fan seem to be about uh, below 10%, it just shuts it off. And above about 95%, it shuts it off. So you're limited to 10 and 95% of usable range. But yeah, so this would be how 
uh, you would set up how your fan is going to ramp in. So, like if I wanted to mess with this, I'd probably, I don't know, drag it down here or something like this. You know, maybe about 180, I want the fan to start coming on. And then, and then whenever it gets up to, what is this value? 195, then, you know, I want it to start really ramping up. Which, of course, I would need to drop these values down a little bit since 95 seems to be the upper limit of what this controller is willing to do. So that's how you set the graph up. Just set this back over here to about 40-ish, something like that. And then of course you'd hit burn or whatever, but since I don't have it hooked up, it's just gonna have me make the changes whenever I turn the computer back on. But I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the wiring, start the blazer so I have a tack signal and we can watch this thing run a little bit. Also, thing I forgot to mention, for the sake of testing here, so since I'm using an idle output, uh, Megasquirt doesn't seem to want to do anything with the PWM idle output if it doesn't see a tag signal. So I have one of those gem stems that I could hook up to the computer, but as far as I can tell, that gem stem is incapable of producing the coil negative signal, tag signal. So the way I have it rigged up here is I'm using the 92 Blazer for some testing. So it had this random tack wire coming off of it that somebody had spliced in there for a tack at some point. So I've tied onto that wire. So that's my coil negative effectively, my tack output. Uh, just as though you were gonna put a regular old school tack on it. And then I come down here and I forget, I'll have to look at what diode I got here. Um, <clears throat> but I put this diode in. Oh. Focus. Hopefully there you can see the band. But I put that diode in there and it seems to have really fixed the tack signal because before it would bounce all over the place. But putting that diode in there, it seems to really, really stabilize it. But yeah, so I have to have the tack signal in order for this to work. Okay, so I have the car running right now. And you can see this gauge over here, engine speed, so I have a good tack signal, and it's not jumping around. Without that little diode I mentioned, this thing was just jumping all over the place, totally unusable for really anything as far as ignition or fueling. So things uh, to pay attention to here, this gauge right here is our PWM output. So this is what it's currently telling the fan to do. And again, uh, it seems like 10% is about the lower limit. Anything below that, and it's not going to come on. And then coolant temp over here. So I've adjusted the graph so that I can play around with it here at about 96 degrees, which is about how hot it is out. So, and it also will do a soft start, which we'll look at in a second. But so if I drag this up to about 30%, you can see PWM uh, idle percent jumped up. So fan is now running at about 30%. Pulling a decent bit of air even at that. So take it up to about 50%. really pulling some good air. I think this is a real similar uh, radiator fan to the two-speed Taurus fan that everybody raves about. I think this is a, uh, it looked, the motor itself looked real similar, at least from the pictures I was seeing. And if we really take this up, the 
upper limit. So maybe it's not 95, maybe it's closer to 90. And then see, it soft starts, so it's not just gonna hammer the electrical system real hard. So I think 90 is the actual limit. And I mean, it is pushing some air. bring it back down here so about 12 and a half percent still moving a little bit of air but so that is the setup and then again I would have to adjust this graph to where it actually corresponds to a reasonable engine temp but that is how I'm gonna install this so hopefully that was helpful I couldn't find much info on trying to do this with a older MS2 but hopefully it was helpful. If it was, I'd appreciate you letting me know. But anyways, thanks. All right, so here is the part number and info for this radiator fan shroud combo thing. Came off of a, I believe it was a 2001 Volvo. And I guess just some scrapyard etiquette is just because you don't need a part doesn't mean that nobody will ever need the part. So, I mean, just be courteous with it and Try not to, you know, go out of your way to tear stuff up. Like, the guy pulled the radiator out of this car, and he just tossed the shroud off to the side, and somebody walked all over it at some point and broke it up a bit. So, that sucks. Thankfully, it wasn't totally destroyed, because this was the only one I could find. But, you know, just because you don't need the part doesn't mean that nobody ever will. So, just try and... I always try and be courteous, you know, close hoods. And try and put stuff in a way that it'll be at least somewhat preserved for somebody else who may need it. But as far as fixing these broken spots, I cut up this metal, uh, hit everything with 80 grit, and then hit it all with wax and grease remover. And so what I'm gonna do is just use like JB Weld or something, uh, just epoxy these down, and then I'll flip it over and fill the hole on the other side with epoxy as well and go over the top of it. and. I don't know, I may have to come back and sand on it, but I'm just going to try to make it look decent where it's not going to keep cracking and breaking. All right, so this is after the epoxy is all set up. Went ahead and just fogged some flat black spray paint over it. So this side I didn't dress up at all. It's pretty much just exactly as I left it. So I just uh, hit any big damage with some epoxy before I put the metal on, and then I just kind of covered one side of the epoxy up, or one side of the panel up with epoxy and slapped it down. So that's how I did that. There's the other one. And so here's the other side. So once I had the little patches on there, I took extra epoxy and filled the hole up and just kind of spread it around real good. And let me see, that's another one right there. And then there's a big crack right there. I didn't notice it the first time I was messing with it, but it has a crack that ran all the way across to here. Uh, that had that didn't line up exactly right, but that was cracked, obviously. This was cracked. It had another crack uh, somewhere on the inside around here. So I think what happened is the Neanderthal that took the radiator out of this Volvo just cut the wires over here and then threw this on the ground and stepped just square in the middle of it on his way out. So kudos to that guy for doing that. Uh, so once the epoxy dried, I hit it with some 80 grit sandpaper and smoothed it out, you know, decently. I mean, I didn't want to spend a ton of time with it, but I just tried to make it look a little more decent where at a glance, it's not hugely noticeable. This side, since it was cracked so bad, I left it thicker just so it has a little more strength because it was cracked all the way up to about right here. So covered all that up with epoxy and then 
I did that trick of killing the tape where I kind of got uh, took a piece of painter's tape and like stuck it to my uh, pants a few times so it would get some dust and then I stuck it over the label and traced around it with the razor blade painted this thing uh, again just flat black just to make it look decent and then because I killed the tape whenever I peeled the tape off it didn't take any of the label off so I still have that and then this stuff I just kind of lightly hit with the wire wheel just to make it shiny or a little bit more shinier so I'm just gonna mock it up in the car and see what it looks like all right so I got it just kind of sitting in there and looks pretty decent so I did have to cut off this little piece here on either side in order for it to fit inside the frame rails so this wire here is the PWM signal for this module so I'm gonna take this and it's gonna run across the top over to the disconnect relay for that wire and then of course it'll go into the car to the ECU and one thing of note for future me is this plug came off of a it was still a similar module but it was off of a Ford I think and so this didn't match the Volvo one but I needed a high amperage connector so I went ahead and just reused this I pulled the spade clips out of it which was a pain opened them up resoldered everything uh, or recrimped new wire into it soldered it so that's how I reused this plug and then the wiring is super simple it just I used 8 gauge for this which I mean is overkill but I would rather have a little heavier gauge wire because they didn't have 10 gauge at the store so it just runs along the bottom here. And so my ground is grounded right here with the battery cable and the uh, engine ground. And then the positive goes back into this, if I can. All right, now that that's open, the positive runs up here straight to this terminal, which is constant 12 volts. So, how is this going to work with constant power being run to it? Well, this module is really smart and cool, and it has a relay built into it. Or at least what I read was it has a relay built into it. So it's not going to do anything if it doesn't have a signal. Unless it fails, of course. If it fails, then it's going to run the fan until the battery dies. That was a problem that I read with these. But otherwise, you wire it up to constant power, and it's not going to turn on or do anything unless you're giving it a PWM signal to uh, for it to turn on. So wiring that was super easy. Didn't need a relay or anything for it. So as far as mounting it, uh, this is pretty much as far as I'm going to get because this is not the radiator I'm going to be using because that's the original one. I'm going to try and go all out on the cooling system just because I foresee that uh, being a difficulty with this car. So I'm going to get a, if I can, a four core aluminum radiator. And then once I have that, then I'll figure out about how I'm going to mount the shroud because that radiator is most likely going to be different from this one, you know, just a little bit. But we'll see how it goes. So that's as far as I'm going to get with this for now. So... That's a wrap on this. Thanks.